David Lopresti, and I'm here with the Lopresti cowling for the PA-32 aircraft. Now this cowling kit uh, covers the aircraft pre-1994, it's the Saratoga, and then before that the Piper and Lance. And a lot of the bits and pieces we're going to talk about here today also work for the Cherokee 6, the 300 horse Cherokee 6. Now, everyone always talks about the cowling kit, and the cowling is, is pretty important, but what we have to remember is to make the cowling kit work, there are several hundred other pieces in the kit, and we'll talk a little bit about those here in a moment. I've got the, the basic cowling split left and right, I have a belly fairing, a new set of nose gear doors, some nose gear door mechanism to make all that work. Again, we'll look at that in just a second. We've got the windshield wedge, we've got two bigger new oil coolers, a whole bunch of bits and pieces and hardware and instructions, uh, new baffling. Uh, all that stuff is what it takes to do this whole nose job, the whole front end, the whole little presty cowl for the PA-32. Let's start looking at the cowling first. Okay, this is the basic cowling. We, we split it left and right. Now, there, there's a reason for that. The stock cowling is split top and bottom, and so that split line goes through the inlets, so that joint always looks a little untidy, a little bit uh, out of kilter. There's big puckers in the sides of the old cows. That's because Piper only used a very limited number of fasteners, a couple of latches on the sides, a couple knobs on the back, so in between the cowling could stretch and move. We use a nice tight pattern of machine screws and plate nuts so there isn't any room for that puckering to happen. It uh, makes the cowling look new for many, many years. Now, let me pull this aside here. You can see, split left and right, you'll be able to take off the left side of the cowling pretty easily and be able to work on your airplane. Now, during pre-flight, we install two uh, quarter turn, two doors with quarter turn fasteners and a hinge. There's one on each side. Makes it much easier to do a good pre-flight because you can actually see what's going on in that uh, engine without having to pull the whole top of the cowling off. The cowling itself is a carbon fiber fiberglass laminate. Uh, we put this reflective, uh, heat reflective material on the inside. That keeps that printout, that waffly looking pattern from developing in the composites. We have a nice duct going back for the cooling air inlet. Uh, when you look at it, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but as it goes aft, this duct expands. So the air can go in and slow down and expand and pressurize the top of the plenum. So it's a very efficient inlet. Uh, the shape of this lip makes a big difference. The position of the inlet, if you look at it this way, you can see that the inlet is very close to behind the propeller blade. Uh, we did that for a reason. There's higher energy air behind the prop. Uh, you got to get as close to the back of the propeller as you can. We are a half inch away. That's as close as the regs will let us get to it. So we're taking advantage of that higher energy air to make the cooling more efficient. Now, the cowling itself, again, is a carbon fiber and fiberglass laminate. We encapsulate that carbon in glass to make sure there isn't any corrosion issues. Now, uh, let me, let's look at the other side. The other side is a little bit more complex. We have the same ductwork in the front, the same door on the side. You'll notice this access, that goes into the air duct for the induction air, uses the same air filter that Piper's used for years on that model airplane. Now you also see something new here, the cow flap. All your cooling air exits now past our cow flap. The stock airplane, the whole bottom of the cowling is open. Air just kind of goes out willy-nilly out through the bottom. There's those uh, extruded hat sections on the belly. There's all the pipes and plumbing and engine mounts. All that flow gets disturbed going out, hits the slipstream, and you get kind of a rumble on your feet. Uh, as it rolls down the fuselage. We eliminate that by having a nice exit duct coming out, a cow flap that's pilot controllable from inside. It's a lockable T-handle. I'll show you the cable here in a minute. So you can pull it out and lock it. 
or push it forward uh, to uh, to close it up. Now, let me show you the inside of the duct. That's kind of important. Again, the inside of this cowling has that highly reflective uh, heat material, heat protective material on it. It's a uh, uh, aluminized paint. Uh, there's also some heat blankets in strategic areas. The cow flap, you'll see, the cow flap chute has a nice bell mouth so the air going out can get organized before it enters the chute and gets accelerated out into the uh, airflow. This is a sealed duct going back. That's where your induction air will tie in and your air filter will be inside there. And remember I was talking about bringing the inlet forward? See how far forward the our new induction air inlet is? Right up within a half an inch of the back of the propeller blade. The stock one has that inlet way back here. And you lose all that free supercharging by being farther away from the propeller. By being up front, we get more manifold pressure, you get better performance. Now, this particular airplane, this customer opted to put our boom beam landing light in place. Uh, that's been pretty popular the last decade or so. Some of the older models had a uh, bucket on the inside where you put your landing light and there was a clear lens. This is actually a better fit up. Uh, we pull it a little bit farther forward because the boom beam landing light's a little bit deeper and there is a muffler and shroud that goes right behind there. There's not a whole lot of room. By pulling that forward, the light works a little better. You get a wider angle of view on the beam itself. Plus, uh, this can stay in place when you take the cowling on and off. The old style bucket that went on the inside, you'd have to remove that bucket every time you pulled this side of the cowling off. Much better improvement. Now, to check oil, you still have the quick latch for the oil check door. That's still in place, uh, as well as the, as the big access door. Now, that's the cowling. That's the last thing that goes on the airplane as part of this mod. Let's go back a little bit and talk about what we're doing on the belly of the airplane. Okay, this is the afterbody or belly fairing for the Piper lamps. Now, remember I was talking about how all the cooling air exited out the bottom of the stock cowling and we sealed all that up? This is how we seal it up. We extend the firewall down with some stainless steel pieces. This is upside down. You know, this is the belly. That way's up. This piece goes across here. We have other pieces that seal up all the way around the wheel well, uh, go all the way out, and blend back up into the side with these pieces. So that seals that leak path. Now, something that a lot of people don't realize is, you know, when you retract the main gear on a Piper, the, the main gear goes up into the wing, sticks out of the wing a little bit, but the nose gear sticks out a bunch. It's got a big lump sticking out there. We didn't like that, it slows you down, so we made longer nose gear doors with a nice curve to them to completely enclose that nose wheel. Now, to make that work, because the pushover mechanism, the scissor mechanism on the stock doors wouldn't cut it, didn't have enough power, we add uh, a third door and this uh, hydraulic actuator to open and close this door, and there's a little sequence valve that goes up inside. So when the nose gear retracts, it hits the sequence valve uh, that pulls this little door closed, and that holds the longer doors closed. Kind of a neat little setup. Uh, so you end up with three doors, the nose wheel well is completely enclosed, and you have a nice smooth belly. Remember those kinks, those uh, hat sections on the belly of the airplane? They go back and they make that kink, that turn. Well, we cover all that up with this belly fairing too. Really a pretty neat little setup. Uh, and that's some more of the bits and pieces. Again, you can only do this with the whole cowling. You can't do it separate. Let's go talk about the windshield fairing now. Okay, one of the other things we did, because now we have the belly fairing going back, we have the new cowlings on the front, but if you look at the intersection of the leading edge of the windshield and the top of the cowling on that Saratoga and Lance, it, it's kind of ugly. It's got a real sharp corner. We didn't like that. We know that smoothing that out at speed, we tested and we found the right height. This is about an inch and a half above contour. This piece goes right in front of the windshield. You can see it curves back and this is where the windshield would be. This is where the firewall is and it sits right on top and is mounted with uh, 
uh, rib nuts and screws so you can take it off again if you ever have to get into the uh, windshield to do a windshield change. And yes, you still can get into the baggage compartment. We have it trimmed so it uh, clears that hinge for the baggage door. Kind of cool. Adds a little bit more speed. I think it looks a lot nicer too. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about airflow, some of the things that we did different. Uh, when you look in the front of the cowling on a stock piper, it's a great big giant inlet. We go to a smaller inlet. And you may say, you know, how can we get away with that? Don't you need all that air? Well, when we measured the air that went in the in and the air that went out the out, more goes in the in than out the out. Yeah, what happens is the air goes in through the front of that big giant hole. The engine can't consume it all, so it spills back out past the spinner. And so what we did is we went through and we made a new baffle plate and we seal up, this goes right up on the engine cowling, and we seal up this entire exit with this plate. Uh, so now all the air that goes in the inlet, it's got to go through a fin somewhere, it's got to go through a cylinder or an oil cooler, it can't sneak out past the uh, uh, propeller spinner. Now when we looked at the balance of flows of the air that, that could flow through the engine and the amount of air that could flow through the cooler, it just didn't balance, it didn't match up. So what we did is we went to bigger oil coolers. The stock cooler is only nine fins. We're going to 13 fin double pass oil cooler. Really a, a neat little setup. And you get two, one for each side. And to make all that work, we have a bunch of bits and pieces. These uh, bags here are all the instructions to make all that play. This is the instructions for the windshield wedge, uh, this is instructions for some of the baffling. Uh, here is some of the instructions for the oil cooler. There's brackets in here because the hole for the old oil cooler is small. We have to make that hole in the baffle bigger. So we have doubler plates and brackets to make all that work. Uh, standoffs to uh, uh, tie into the thicker oil cooler. All kinds of bits and pieces. The uh, uh, new cow flap cable, the brackets for the cow flap cable, a uh, new uh, scat duct to tie in the air box to our cowling. The stock air box gets used on our cowling. There are a ton of little bits and pieces to make this whole thing work. Okay, this is winding up the cow kit. This is for the Piper Lancer Saratoga again, earlier than 1994. One thing we didn't cover on all the bits and pieces, remember we have the the belly fairing, the nose gear doors, the actuators, the brackets, the baffling, uh, all the brackets and bits and pieces, the cow flap cable, the oil coolers, the windshield fairing, uh, and the cowling. Now, one thing that you're not seeing on here is the new taller pointy spinner. That is part of the kit, but it's already on the airplane, so I didn't want to pull it off to put it out here. But if you are interested in this kit, you have some more questions, uh, like how much faster will you go? You'll get about 10 more knots out of this kit, about 12 more miles an hour. That's sort of like a uh, permanent tailwind. Uh, the cowling, again, is split left and right, not top and bottom, so your inlets stay looking nice and you don't see that seam. The cowling is carbon fiber, so it's stiff, stays looking pretty. Uh, if you want more information, give me a call. It's David Lopresti at Lopresti Aviation, 772-562-4757 or find us on our webpage, lopresteaviation.com, or on Facebook. Thanks.